This is one of the more interesting interviews I've ever done with a musician. Let me tell you why. I had on Andromeda and Archaea from Falterkammer. This is an opera singer, and the band is playing black metal, arranged in a Baroque classical style, replete with even harpsichord and classical guitar. And the subject matter is about powerful women, including dominatrixes. And in this conversation, we even talked about this French noblewoman who used to beat men in sword duels, and she kidnapped a nun and was charged with arson, sentenced to, or rather the sentence would have been being burned at the stake, but she was pardoned by King Louis. All kinds of different discussions about the deeper meaning of these art forms and the inspirations behind them. I think if you're into more than just the surface level of why these metal musicians make the music they make, you will find this as interesting as I did. Without further delay, here's my conversation with Andromeda from Volterkammer. Andromeda and Archaea from Volterhammer. Welcome to Heavy Metal Philosophy. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. I'm very I, excited about this one because I, I've heard the new record Vibramacht and I got to say, I'm really blown away by it. I, I've not heard anything oh, like this before. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm I'm learning German. I've been trying to learn for the past oh. year. So let's do some, let's see if my translations are correct. Let's start <laughs> with the band name, Volterhammer with the F. Is torture chamber? Yeah, Folter Kammer is torture chamber, correct. Okay, and then the name of the album that drops this Friday is exactly. Vibermacht, and that's Women Power? Yes. yes. Um. Well, the word vibe is a bit more root than Frau. Normally it's Frau, right? Yeah. Frau, singular, Frauen, plural. But vibe or Viber is a bit more root it's it's like when a man thinks a woman is not attractive or she's annoying or you know or ugly something like this then he called her a vibe some and and i i think i would rather translate it to something like bitch power you know <laughs> like you know what i mean like something in between bitch and woman yeah i think that's where it should be placed mm -mm. Yeah. Okay, this makes sense as we go, because then <laughs> the opening track, uh, Anno Domina, which is Anno Dominatrix. Something like this, yes. I, it's like a word play. It's not correct Latin or something like this. It's like, a, yeah, the Domina, in German you say um, Domina instead of Dominatrix, you know? So it's like a shorter version, and I thought it's it's actually a really funny were play with with anno dominum like as we know it you know ad and but to take the the dominatrix approach to this <laughs> it's like a double entendre okay mm -hmm. and and then we've got uh the the unterwerfung the submission yes. very good yes correct yes okay got that one right very good and then yeah you do uh Kuss mir die Füße, uh, kiss my feet. Exactly, kuss mir die Füße. Die Füße, okay. Ü, it's like uh, that uh, umlaut ü. Ü. It's like when very you say that. Very good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very good. And then we've got uh, Herren de Schwerte, which is uh, Mistress good. of Swords. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this one, this one's going to trip me up. Das Peitschengedicht. You do that very well, das Peitschengedicht. The, 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 the. Gedicht. Dicht. Yeah, very good. And this is the whipping poem. Yeah, the poem of the whip, something like the this. The poem mm -hmm. of the whip. I like that one better. That's more metal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm sensing a theme here. Is this a concept album about a dominatrix? Well, um the i mean we try to combine the aesthetics of opera and black metal right so something very refined and technical and what we associate maybe with something also really beautiful or elegant or even elite you know like i don't know if, if that makes sense if i use the right terminology in english 
Um, and then you have black metal, which is really raw and rebellious and, and, and can be even considered depending on how you look at it, is like ugly or something. And the, um, the dominatrix is a woman that is a very provocative character to a certain degree, right? And she is superior. She's dominant. She's like, she she wears beautiful clothes, but she does ugly things. And I think like uh, that's a, an interesting contrast. Something so beautiful, um, a beautiful woman, but then wearing all these spiky stilettos and having those torture instruments. And she's dangerous, you know. And I think that's very that's very. Uh, intriguing and also when you but at the same time she has this dominant things this this beautiful thing this refined thing so it's like, like a personification of this mix between opera and and um black metal i don't know if that makes any sense but also how she's dressed the appearance she has it has something metal but it also has something elegant so it's a nice contrast that she represents as a persona but in fact, it's not so much only about the dominatrix or kinky things or or um, uh, femdom or BDSM. It's the word, the very word Weibermacht, right, is an official cultural and art historical terminology, which describes in general um, this phenomena or this depiction in arts um, that uh, a woman is in a dominant position. She's very cunning, she's cheeky, or she's very beautiful or seductive, and uh, a very wise or handsome or powerful or strong man is completely obedient or sub submissive and even humiliated by her, you know? So it goes back to medieval times in Europe. It's very interesting, this portrayal. During that time, it was so provocative, this image of a dominant woman over a, a man, a powerful man, because men were always in charge during that time, right? And to have a woman who who was seen as someone who should be submissive and kind in such a dominant and provocative position, I thought it's a very interesting subject to write lyrics for and also to perform as a singer um, within the frameworks of, of a metal band, you know? And I thought it's something different. We, we have, uh, in black metal, we have a lot of, like, Satanism covered, right? It's It was very provocative during the time when it came up, in, in very, um, like, conservative Christian areas, and all of a sudden, all those young people start to talk about Satan and all the things that were forbidden, right? It was really provocative. But uh, I'm a woman. It's an it's a different time now. I, I I'm not a religious person, so I I don't really care about that. But to have something a bit more like you know, there is a, a feminist approach to this, but also a, a a certain amount of humor in it to provoke with something like a dominatrix. You know, I thought this this is more like authentic for me to sing about something like this, and. Um, yeah, within this history of Weibermacht, of this concept, it is something provocative, like Satanism is within the realms of religion, you know, Christianity. So that's why I picked this topic as a, a motif that runs through all the songs. But every song looks at it from a different point, like Herrin der Schwerter is about um, a historical figure. Like uh, it, she was a French opera singer who was really good at sword fighting. She dressed like a man during that time. She even dueled men. She killed even some of them. She was very good. She was gay. She wanted to kiss the woman he was dancing with. And she she dueled him. And she was even pardoned by the king. When I read this story, I was like, wow, that's so brutal. <laughs> did they, did the king give it. a reason for the pardon? I don't know. I don't know that. I should research that. In fact, that's yeah. a very good question. But you can you can Google that story. That's really I'm going crazy. To. Lamont all right, I'm going to interrupt the podcast right here because if you're anything like me, you heard that story she just told and you were like, I'm curious about that. I was curious about that. So I did indeed Google it. And here's what I found out. The heroine that we talked about, her name, and forgive me French people for my awful pronunciation, Julie de Abogny. They called her La Mapine. Did I do that right? Or did I really butcher it? I'm sorry. She was the daughter of 
of the master of the horse for King Louis the Fourteenth. That's right, the Sun King. And because she was the daughter of the master of the horse, she learned all sorts of page skills that she might not have normally. She got really good at sword fighting. She wound up getting in a relationship with the master of the sword. And she decided to leave because she wanted adventure and she was an opera singer. She would travel around singing and challenging people at these concerts that she would put on to sword fighting duels. And she was dressing like a man so she'd be taken serious. And then they'd be like, uh, you, you can't be a woman because there's no way a woman could fight like that. And then she would rip her shirt off and show her breasts. And they're like, I guess, I guess as a woman. So she wound up with this other woman who was the daughter of a very important merchant. And you know, this is very not cool at the time. So she stole the body of a dead nun, put it in that lady's chambers and set it on fire to fake that lady's death so they could run off and have an affair together. She eventually got bored of that chick, brought her back to her dad's like, here, take her. So that's where the charges came from. She was charged with kidnapping and arson and not appearing before the tribunal, several other things, which was punishable by burning at the stake. But, you know, she had to hook up her dad's boss, the master of swords, had the king's ear, so she got a full pardon from the Sun King. That's a cool story. Yeah, it's really, that's so bloodthirsty, you know, like, I thought that's super black metal. And and it's an opera singer also. She was very um, famous. She was popular. And, and to have a figure like this during that time, you know, in the past, like, wow, I had to write a song about her. So it's not just about only the dominatrix, but about women who were considered to be extremely provocative uh, within the realms of what is normally associated with what men do, right? And or like very, uh, very strong or cunning women, provocative in, by nature. I thought that's great to sing about this on a black metal album. And Absolutely. it's something different. Mm -mm. Absolutely. I, 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 that brings me to two points. So huh. here in the south of, of the United States, Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a, they call it the Bible Belt. It's just, it's a yeah. very religious area of the country. I but, see. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you, if you, if you sing about Satan, it it's a, it's a bit provocative, but mm -hmm. in my opinion, down here, it's more provocative to sing about sex because I bluegrass, see. traditional Southern music is... Mm often about satan but that's mm -hmm. not considered blasphemous down here to sing bluegrass mm -hmm. of course metal yes. is considered blasphemous but any genre of music if you're overtly sexual it is oh. time people around here clutch their pearls it is it is sinful oh, okay i see that's very interesting to know i think it's it's really depending on where you come from like the band falter Kammer, it, this band was born in new york and in new york i don't know how to shock people it takes really a lot because they're used to <laughs> yeah. everything right but even within the realms of metal music and i think even also in specifically in black metal music it's also i mean the lyrics like a title like kiss my feet <laughs> Where in metal do you hear lyrics like no. this? Because normally in in and it's I mean it's a it's an impera imperative like it's a you have to do it. It's a, it these lyrics are also provocative. In, in, they are uh, rude, you know. It's it's like how a dominatrix would talk to her uh, submissive men during a session. It's really rude and 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 um, uh, harsh and. Um, so, but at the same time, it's also very feminine to talk like this. And normally in metal, you see that the style of how the lyrics are written, it's all, all very, I would say like there is a male force in this. And I felt yes. like, ah, I want to try something different, but not like, um, you know, the typical topics, but something unexpected. Because for me, black metal is rebellion. So, and how can I be rebellious within as a woman within metal. And I was like, okay, a very female um, approach to the lyrics too, you know, could also be understood as a provocation to talk about sex. Even here, that's something when somebody writes lyrics about kinky 
kinky, you know, things about sex, a very specific kind of sexual expression. Uh, it's also here considered in, in where I come from, Switzerland, and, and German-speaking area, it's also something that, uh, okay, I mean, the, the people here are open-minded about many things, but you can see it's still weird for them too, you know, how to, to react to this. Why? Yeah, and... and um, uh, it's it's a uh, of course uh, who likes to talk about sex so op uh, openly you know yeah see we we continue to do this but within metal you know mm. it's then it's always from men but never never really from the from the female perspective and i wanted to you know to add something new a new spice to to the whole thing <laughs> yes and I, and I, your band has has to me proven a point that i've made on this podcast several times so I, Mm. I'm I'm a big death metal fan. And when I oh, compare death metal and black metal, I've said for a long mm. time that death metal is more often going to be what I like because it's got a higher floor. Like there's more good death metal. But mm. black metal has a higher ceiling. I think that black metal mm. is capable of achieving high art in its its genre form. And I think Volterhammer mm -hmm. is a perfect example of that. The way that you mix opera and you ha there's harpsichord on this record. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start doing, you, you can't do things like that in death metal. The moment you do, it ceases to be death metal. But black mm -hmm. metal, you can you can really play around the edges of the genre. I was just talking to Zach, like our guitarist, and he said what he likes about black metal is that when sometimes he listens to black metal tunes and then he imagines it to be played by an orchestra and sung with a singer. And he says for him, there is so many connections on that level between black metal and and uh, classical music or like opera. You know, it's like very, very close to it. Maybe that's that's something you perceived, too, like maybe in this direction that there is um and i i think too that black metal gives a lot of opportunity to be playful and and to add other aesthetics into it and that's what i actually love about it you know i also love death metal you know i i, I think that's great it's a very different aesthetic it's a very yes. different approach to to metal music and i think there is um, I I love the both. I love everything. In fact, like <laughs> I find if it moves me, I'm I'm I jump right into it. You know. So um, with black metal, what I like is that it's so punk by nature. In the meaning of it's so raw. You know, where I come from, where I like it's where everything is so like when you when you study classical singing and it's it's like very you know uh, delicate with everything. To have something like black metal, it's a it's like a burst out of this of 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 this like how do you say like not constraint it sounds a bit negative but it's like you have those strict rules and black metal wants to blast them you know and death metal has technical rules too huh? yes. it's also already a bit more you know like this and yes you are right i think that's a very interesting point you're making mm -mm. and to that point and to your point the aesthetic part of it death metal mm -hmm. dudes and you know i i love it but, you know, camo shorts, sleeves cut off, you know, long hair, beard, mm. that's your aesthetic. Whereas black metal, there's there's this very theatrical and, and very yes. different aesthetics depending on the band. Yes, mm -mm, you're right. It's uh, that there's also always the visual aspect of it, not just the sound and also how people, what they are interested in, you know, that the, the whole surrounding. And yeah, that's that. I think it it goes hand in hand, and with for us it's like something we want to to set contrasts. You know that Faltercomer is all about contrasts. I think like extreme contrasts. That's what we like to work with as musicians, and that's what we think we want to bring it to black metal because we. Uh, I personally, I can. Uh, yeah, I I love when there is a lot of variety. You know, I yeah, all, you I the... love all kinds of. Sorry. Hmm? Yes. You got the, no, no, please. The, the elegance of your opera singing, and then the, like you mm -hmm. said, the raw explosiveness of the black metal. Yes. And, and so far from what I've seen of you all, I've, I've just discovered you, but so far what I've seen, y'all don't wear corpse paint. 
So that in nope. of itself nope. is is kind of rebellious to the genre. It's a mm. it's a very visually appealing. All your videos, you know, very all your Thank photo you. shoots, very visually appealing. You know, it's a lot of black metal's ugly. It's black and white. It's blood. It's spikes. You know, you you mm. all have colors in your in your videos and your and your photo shoots. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Um, uh, there are elements that we pick up, of course. I think that's that's just it lies in the in its nature. But but also to set also here the contrast. It's good because how I don't. I'm I'm not interested in in recycling or co copying what is already there and is already really great. You know, I think that, that I have to. We have to as a band and also me as a singer. I have to find a place on my own. And then how can you do that when there are already so many great artists and bands who do so many great things? And also with, within, uh, you know, in, in this context of uh, of uh, visual aesthetics, as you say, yes, you have, how can you remember Falter Kammer? You know, like it's, you need something to pick up that you will remember, oh, these guys with the red ropes and <laughs> the lady with the, with the, the crazy high voice. <laughs> <laughs> something like this acoustic and visually yes it's, it's definitely striking the moment i spun the record i was like oh okay this <laughs> is this is what i'm talking about here because yeah I, i've said that thing about black metal being capable of of being high art and a lot of my mm. audience that are really big in the death metal i'm big into death metal too i'm not trying i'm not trying to put down death metal i yeah. love death yeah. metal but sure not they, you know, they say death metal can be high art too i'm like yeah but not like this the mm. the like rivers of nile mm. it, that's progressive music and and, and mm. i think the work is one of the grandest albums in death metal i've heard in a long time but it starts to become something else when it does that mm. mm -mm. yes it's really in the end it's all about your personal taste but for i can yeah i'm somebody i can i enjoy the many different flavors you know what i mean like uh, i i love for example i love meshuga a band like mm -hmm. this i just love them you know and it's it has nothing to do with black metal what they are doing you know what i mean <laughs> and then i listen to classical music and i love jazz music and I, you know all of it it's it's something that is typical for me ever since i was little and in uh, and i think there should not be um i i you know, like that, that it's a fight between the genres. Right, like right, that, I agree. That, that's, a, I think we can be very much inspired by each other. I'm really inspired by death metal vocalists, for example. My voice sits very high. You hear that, right? I'm a so-called coloratura soprano. So we, even within soprano voices, I sit very high. When I do growls, even I use the same techniques like death metal vocalists, it will still sound high like a black metal vocalist, you know. I can do whatever I want. I, the gutturals, I can do a lot of the lowest growls I can, and it will still sound like black metal. So it, that's where my voice fits to. You have to respect these things too. Whereas lower voices, when they start to do screams, of course, they will also sound lower, you know. So and with death metal, that's what we associate those low, strong growls, not those high shrieky sounds, you know. But that's that's it. It fits. I think it fits to the soprano voice to also have these higher sounding uh, screams. And But still, when I listen to death metal vocalists, what I do, I try to translate that to my voice. When I hear a great riff on the guitars, I mean, black metal guitar playing is not, not that low in the tuning, right? Like in death metal. And it's maybe also a little less technical depending on how you play. But, but you can always find inspiration in that. And it's great also when, when death metal uh, musicians can maybe an, take an inspiration out of what black metal bands do. Why not? You know, you can 100%. translate that into your own genre. I think that's great, you know? Agreed. I, I like what you said about it. it shouldn't be a fight. It's probably my fault because the episode that I released where I made that observation, I called it black metal versus death metal. So maybe that's my fault, <laughs> but I didn't mean for it to be a fight to say one is better than the other. I'm, I'm merely yeah. making an observation. Cause you know, I can say that death metal has groovier riffs. That, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I think it's better. It's just a, you know, it's a, yeah, it's an observation about the technique of it. 
Yes. The whole aesthetic is a different one. Yes. But that's that's like comparing languages. There is beauty in every language, you know. And sometimes you have a, 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 a much faster connection with one kind of language than with another. But still, that doesn't mean it's not interesting to to hear it or to to uh, to appreciate the culture that go the cultures that goes with it. You know, it's like I think that's very interesting. You know, I could not say only black metal or only death metal. No. My voice, my voice will tell me. I uh, will say, okay, probably it fits better to this genre. You know, like when you sing, when you're a clean singer, some voices sound great when they when they sing bel canto, like uh, operatic singing, and some others they sound great when they sing like soul music or something like that. You have to respect this, even uh, uh, even when you listen to other things too. You know, my voice would probably not really fit to Meshuga, but I would love to <laughs> you know but you have to you, your voice will tell or your your instrument will tell or your also how how you can play it will tell you what kind of music you can do but that doesn't mean you cannot be inspired by other things you know that's like i can never sing the the the, the repertoire of a bass of a male bass voice i would love to have that low voice but i can't i sit very high so no use to try to sing like a bass singer. <laughs> it will never sound like this. It will never work. But I can still listen and learn a lot from bass singers. You know what I mean? So that's the same with styles in music too. And that's what I love. I love the the interaction, the dialogue between styles and genres and, and also people, of course. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, and I want to compliment your scream too. Like people are going to hear this, and obviously the the, the operatic singing is very impressive, and it's the core mm -hmm. of the music. But then you mm -hmm. accentuate some of the heavy parts with your scream, and 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 like you talked mm -hmm. about, you still use that operatic technique, and and I really like it. Makes the scream unique. It it like you say, it sounds mm -hmm. black metal, but it sounds unique to you. It it doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. Like you said, a shrieky black metal sound that that almost like wicked witch sound. It sounds more authoritative. Mm, interesting. Yes, I I mean I play with all kinds of sounds within within screams. You know, like with the with the clean singing too. I love to to play with different styles. It's the same with screams, and you also have if you just break it down to a very technical, like a, applicable thing, you have to, the, when you perform live on stage, it's a different thing in the studio because you can take your time. But when you are on stage, it has to be doable in the end without hurting yourself, <laughs> yeah. right? So I can do many more screams, but I I don't have to put them on stage. I have to put on stage what works with the job I have to do without ruining my voice. In the studio, I can do many different styles of screams because I know I can rest the voice after that. I can even take a, some technical risks, you know. But on stage, if you are on tour and you have to do several shows every even, you know, every evening is another show. You have to maintain your voice, and that's what what I sing for Falterkammer is very demanding technically. So I have to filter out, I have to make a selection of the screams that do sound great, but also are really well, easily doable while combining it with the bel canto singing because you use different muscles here, right? Different techniques. So your brain is all over the place. And what I do with faulty camera is I jump between these things and my brain has to get used to it. So I have to practice that. So to be able to mix and mingle how, how I want, you know, for the, for the uh, expression I, I want to do on stage or when I do the interpretation of the songs. But um, you have to be smart about that. And also like uh, economic, it makes sense, economical yes. to, to, to make the right choices of screams. And there are screams, I know they are a bit risky to do them because they make the voice tired very easily. So I try to not do them. It's like, I think you always also have to make um, an aesthetical choice about what does this song need? You don't have to show all your skills in every song, but whatever the song needs for its expression, and I think that's um, something interesting about Falterkammer. I, I learned a lot as a singer to how to become more economical and um, and still expressive at the same time, to, to deal with technical things when it comes to screams. 
And um, yes, some screams are are a bit, I would say, more healthy than others. Same goes for the singing too. When you sing all the time, it makes the voice tired, even if you have a good technique. So you have to uh, you have to be smart about these things too. It's not just for what you want to do, but also what makes sense to do it, you know? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, your your voice is, is very impressive and, and, and obviously technical, but I, you, you just said you have to serve the song, basically, and I can mm, definitely yes. hear that in this because there's moments where I'm like, wow, but then you don't have to show off all the time. And I can definitely no. hear you you making those choices along the way. And I can hear the band making those choices too. Okay. Here's a true. Here's a a a a, a very technical singing section. So the guitars might be a bit more simple there. Or maybe yeah. there's a there's some space here, and that's where I hear the harpsy chord, but I don't hear the harpsy chord all the time. Mm -mm -mm. So yes. I, I assume everybody in the band, not just you, must be classically trained as well. The bass player is. He's um, the bass player started off being a classically trained um, guitarist, but then he went into jazz music. He's an incredible jazz bass player, like nuts and composer. And so he he brings this into that. And Zachary, our guitarist, um, uh, he has he studied his major was composition. And he was into composing for orchestras and stuff. So that's what his, his background. And Darren, the other guitarist, he loves Baroque music and he likes to write songs. And and so um, that's also how it's a part of the, the history, like how how um, Folger Kammer came, came together. It's like um, he always wrote these pieces, these Baroque inspired black metal pieces, you know, and and um so that's also you hear that influence. Even my style of singing, the operatic singing, is not a um, baroque style. There is a specific singing style for baroque music, but I don't do that. I prefer the romantic uh, style, as is, it's called in, uh, or the contemporary classical singing style in um, for my singing. It fits better to my voice. But I think what is interesting that even different classical styles are mixed into Falter Kammer, you know, it's not just one, there are different ones in it. But yes, you are right there. Everybody has um, uh, a kind of a, an access to classical music in either or the other way. And we, everybody in the band loves opera and loves classical music too, not just metal, you know, everybody is also jazz music. Everybody listens to many different styles of music, in fact. Mm -mm. I, I forget which song it was, but one of the songs has a guitar solo in it, and it really uh, reminded me of a classical guitar. Schwert. Yes, yes, you are right. It sounded mm. like somebody with a nylon string guitar with that elevated footstool mm. doing a mm. recital in a in a ah, in yes. a hall. Uh, ah, the intro, the intro of um, uh, das Peitschengedicht, I guess. Right. Ding, no, there's ding, a there's ding, a full ding, guitar ding, solo, ding, ding. but it, yeah, yeah, it, that's in the in der Schwert. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it, it the distortion is not very much; it's just no. barely mm -hmm. distorted, and it, it sounds yes. like a classical performance to me. It, it blew me away because you know oh, here's yeah. this like crunchy black metal guitars, and you would expect like this screaming guitar solo, mm -hmm. and then I heard that mm -hmm. that nice piece, and I was like, oh, that is that's so choice. Ah, interesting that you picked up on that. Uh, yeah, it yes, as you said correctly. Also, the instrument instrumentalists they make make choices to you know whatever is needed, but not more than that. And I think that um, in in classical music, you think a lot about these things. Like the composers in classical music, they think so much about what comes when you know. So it makes sense from for. Um, dynamic reasons you know and also for the expression it's it's um it's it's delicate because sometimes as you say you want to have a shrieking guitar solo and you just want to you know yeah express it all but but then you you have to make a choice you know about what what do you want to express with this song and then it would be maybe completely over the top i don't know or maybe we should make an approach <laughs> <laughs> and try something new but at some point you have to say okay this is going to be this song this is how we do the production and and uh, if 
if you want to mix opera with black metal, of course, you also need to um, to add a little something of this classical word, not just with the operatic singing, but also with how you play the instrument or how you make uh, the 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 chord progressions and so forth and so forth. Yeah. Ah, interesting that you noticed it's. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I I was as soon as I heard it, I was like, okay, this is there's something going on here. This is going to be a different <laughs> listen. I I really appreciated it. And before we go, I just want to ask because this. this you know, I, I love music and it's mainly about music, mm -hmm. but it's also a philosophy channel. The mm. the attraction, you know, I'm always interested in in extreme musicians because they're being attracted to a musical style that's perhaps not so popular. And here we have mm. two very not mainstream styles. You have the opera yes. style <laughs> and then the black metal style. So it, mm. it's like extra distilled, you know, attraction to outside of the norm music and there must be something in mm. your personality that that brought you there <laughs> i don't know chemical reactions in the brain <laughs> <laughs> i mean we're all guided by hormones here <laughs> no um i i i don't know what but i think i mean i cannot tell, talk for everybody in the band only for myself i think Ever since I was little, I was interested in all kinds of things. But I'm also, for example, really interested in literature. You know, I, I take a lot of, of um, inspiration from there. And and um, I think when, for me, there is a similarity between how you compose as a, as a writer and how you compose as a musician. When you think about words, about sounds, about phrases, about phrasings, about how to structure a, a book, a text, or 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 a poem, or um, an essay, and and also how you write a piece of music. There are so many different forms you can do, and for me, one can be connected with the other very easily. So I don't know. I can become very specific about music or about the literature I like, and and. Maybe that's what you what you mean. I don't know if I understood your your when you, question when you listen, correctly. When, when you read literature, are you drawn to darker mm. stories? Mostly, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's it, it, you see me. I'm a happy person. I love sure, all the yeah. time. I love humor. I love satire. I, I love cabaret. I love all these things that are fun. But when it comes to my personal artistic expression or the interests I have, there is always this interest in dark things or even what people consider to be like ugly or disturbing when it's ambiguous or 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 con even con in contradiction you know i love these contrasts these these uh pull, this pull of of different energies so that for me that's not scary for me that's um attract it's attracting me and also in 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 literature i love um very dark Topics, but not just dark with monsters and stuff. I don't mean like like these things, like a uh, mystery or how it's or. But I do like um, when the dark side of humans is is very present. Where like when you see that humans, you can connect with them and have your sympathies, but you can also have the opposite of that. Like it's really like this. You have this whoa um but experience but um for me that's interesting because it shows in an honest way the diversity of what it means to be human and yes i can stand the contradictious thought in my brain for a longer time than just one second and then try to to get it away i think it's interesting also in music i i love when music takes all my attention and and makes me questioned or irritates me you know like in the beginning we all have a, a i think an instinct as human that we are easily like ah oh, no we are like rejecting easily when it's something we don't know or makes us feel uncomfortable but for me um i try to stand this sensation this instant reaction to wait a little longer and to see what it does to me and because most of the time that's when when a whole new horizon opens up in front of you even about yourself I like when when music or art in general or literature changes my mind 
or my perspective or adds another color to the palette you know like when all of a sudden I'm like oh wow I never would have considered that or thought about this or would have never recognized this color if nobody would have told me hey look here this and I'm like wow it really changes everything I love this when this happens to me even in the beginning it's like a shock and I try to fight (laughs) but I I love that and Yes, even when it's about the dark things, there is there are so many great writers, and uh, who write really dark. But it's not it's not about monsters or something. It's just about life or what it means to be human. You know, that's something that intrigues me a lot. Mm. Perfect, perfectly said. You know, because <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm a, I'm pretty happy and content person, but I'm attracted to the to the darkness and it, it yes I, I i'm always interested in why people are you know especially in metal and then you say that the abrasive sounding music you know you, you mm. don't immediately reject it somebody might hear imperial triumphant for the first time and go ah mm. no just, um, dismiss it out of hand but if you're mm. able to get past that initial feeling you can find those those bits there that that do speak to you and I would say the same about your record, Vibermacht. You know, you've got this mm. this grand opera, and then the explosive black metal, and then the subject matter about these powerful and and dominating female figures. I I think mm. all of you will certainly enjoy it. It comes out this Friday, April the nineteenth. Once again, mm. Volterhammer, Vibermacht. High recommendations for me. Thank you so much. And good luck Thank with you. the release. Thank you so much, Chuck, for having me and for talking about Weibermacht. Thank you. My pleasure. 